Hi, I'm Julie from the lifestyle website, julieplanner.com, where I share easy, entertaining ideas, recipes, and home decor. Today, I'm excited to share our Salto ornament recipe with you. I've been making these since I was a young child. The first time I made these was in a friend of mine's kitchen. We got a little carried away and we decided, eh, this is basically the same thing as pizza dough and covered it in ketchup and Parmesan cheese, whatever we could find in the refrigerator and tried to feed it to her little sister. I've grown a lot since then and now we make these in our own kitchen each year as a family tradition. The girls and I like to decorate their trees and their bedrooms with them. They're so nostalgic and you can customize them in a lot of ways as well as making them gifts with fingerprints or gift tags. So I hope you enjoy this easy recipe and you and your family enjoy this tradition of making salto ornaments in your kitchen as well. Making salto ornaments is so easy, which is why it's such a great family activity. You just use a little bit of flour, salt, and water, three staple ingredients you probably already have in your kitchen. Now to get started, we're going to do one cup of salt, the main ingredient in this recipe. Annie, you wanna put that in there for me? And then we're going to do a little bit of flour. Isla, can you put that in there for me? There we go. Let's make sure it all gets in there. And now we're going to add the water. You may notice that I have the dough hook attachment on my KitchenAid mixer, but of course you can do this by hand just as easily. It is nice that it does all the work for you, but either way, all you need to do is mix and knead. So we're gonna go ahead and let it do its magic. You can see how this is just starting to come together. Now you may notice this mixture is still a little bit dry and crumbly, not quite to the point where you can actually knead it yet. So that means we need to add just a little more water. I usually do about a tablespoon at a time until it reaches the right consistency. Now we're gonna finish kneading this by hand. And in just a couple minutes, the kids can really get involved again. But I usually kind of will give it a few knuckles. I don't knead it like I do traditional bread. If you need to add a little flour, if it's feeling too sticky, of course you can. But we'll be doing a little more of that in just a moment when we roll out our dough. And I think we're just about ready to roll it out now. Now we're gonna roll out our salt dough. And just like you would any other dough, you're gonna use a little bit of flour and dust it. And I also like to dust my rolling pin. That way we make sure that nothing sticks. And I'm not the best at rolling out dough, but this is just such an easy recipe. Kind of no fuss, you don't really have to worry about it. You may notice that I'm rolling out on parchment paper. I just like to keep clean up really easy. That way we can get on to decorating our trees. thick you roll out the dough is how long it will take them to dry out. So I kind of like to go thin enough like a cookie, but not too thin where they'll burn. And you don't have to worry about it being the perfect shape or size because we're going to be using our cookie cutters. Okay, now comes the fun part where we get to cut out the shapes for our salt dough ornaments. As you can see, this is by no means perfect, but it absolutely doesn't matter since we'll be cutting them out anyways. So we're gonna start, I like to work our way from the outside in to really try to maximize space. We're gonna gently place the cookie cutter sharp side down at the edge of the dough and you can press. And we're gonna press really hard. Sometimes I'll give it a little wiggle and then we're going to release. If it gets stuck in the cookie cutter, I'll go ahead and transfer it elsewhere on the sheet of parchment paper. But if it doesn't, just wait, I'll show you what I do. Annie, you wanna do one? Okay, put it right next to there. Now push down real hard. 
Good job. We want to be really gentle when we tap them out. That way it doesn't leave any fingerprints. That's of course unless you want to do fingerprint ornaments, which is so fun. Great gift for grandparents. Isla, what shape would you like to do? Oh, you got a big star. Great job. As you can see, this is a nice thickness. Great for baking. Not too thin, not too thick. And you don't notice any inconsistencies. All right, girls, let's finish these up. You'll notice some of them quickly and easily popped out, they wanted to be pressed on, they stuck into the mold, and some did not. So what we're gonna do now is just gently tear away the excess, and they can bake right there where you cut them out. It's just another way to keep cleanup easy and make it a fuss-free activity for the holidays. Of course, if you want, and you should, why not? the more the merrier. You're going to roll this dough back out again and you can make more ornaments. This recipe, depending on the size of your cookie cutout, will make 24 to 48 ornaments. Larger ornaments, of course, like these big stars, consume more space, so you'll range more about 24 to 36. All right, we're ready to put these on a cookie sheet and get baking. Now we just need to make the little holes for the ornaments to hang. Or like I said before, you can use this to tie them on to a gift. They make beautiful gift tags as well. So we're going to just put a straw in gently and pop it out and it leaves the nicest little hole. Now this is a great activity for older children. You just wanna be really gentle so you don't bend the dough. And it's okay if the straw fills up, it won't hurt anything. Okay, now we're gonna transfer these to our cookie sheet. And you can see, again, we can just kinda of keep the mess to a minimum. Because we wanna spend more time enjoying the holidays and less time doing dishes. We're gonna bake these for 20 minutes. And that will help draw all the moisture out of the ornaments, which is what makes them hard. And then we'll transfer them and allow them to finish air drying until they're hard and then we're ready to decorate our tree. For more easy DIY ideas, entertaining recipes and home decor, you can click subscribe and follow the description below to my site at julieblanner.com.